Uh, this comes from Robert. Hi, FHB team. I'll start a big thanks to all you do for us building science nerds. I'd, I've enjoyed you all sharing stories, tips, and tricks while emphasizing that you, there may be more than one right way to do a job. I wanted to highlight this last nugget of wisdom to preface my question. My wife and I are home shopping in the Bay Area. We've been to many open houses and viewed just as many disclosure, uh, foreclosures, I think is what he means. Um, one interesting thing we've noticed is that inspections will often point out that crawl space and attic insulation is installed incorrectly. This mostly has to do with the placement of the vapor barrier. The spaces all appear to be vented, although I did, uh, although I doubt the painted over louvered ventilation is adequate. But why is there so much debate about the placement of the vapor barrier? And is there an authority to turn to when I find these inspection discrepancies from house to house? I appreciate all that you do and look forward to submitting more questions in the future. Thank you for sharing your time. Oh boy, we haven't had a vapor barrier question in at least a few weeks. I think this is awesome. Um, it, it's a little confusing though. So uh, Mike, what do you think's going on here? Do like uh, vented insulated spaces <clears throat> need a vapor barrier? And it certainly, I, I'm confused. Do you have thoughts on this? So l let me back up a second. You, you, you uh, did uh, some in-time editing of what Robert wrote when you put uh, the sentence, we have been to many open houses and have viewed just as many disclosures. And you thought it meant um, uh, foreclosures. And I think he's right. He meant to say disclosures. I think in ah, some states- These are things that people are saying when they're selling their house. It might be right. wrong now. You have to have yeah, disclosures. Okay. And in, in some places, and I, it may be the case in the Bay Area, that a home seller has to have a home inspection done on the property by an independent home inspector to point out all of the deficiencies and therefore that's disclosed to the prospective buyers so that the buyers already have some indication from an independent third party. Uh, it's not widespread. It's just in some areas. So I'm guessing in the Bay Area, that might be one of the local municipal uh, requirements, uh, or maybe it's a California requirement. So what that means is that now when you go to look at a house, if this is the case, that they have these disclosures that Robert is looking at from one house to the next that they're looking at, they're looking at these reports that have been written by home inspectors, independent home inspectors that are indicating this vapor barrier or vapor retarder that is you know, installed improperly. And then they might be indicating on one house, it might say, well, it's installed in the wrong place. It's on the underside of the uh, insulation in a crawl space against the um, against the living space, you know, the floor above. And in other inspectors might be saying it's uh, facing downward into the crawl space and they're both calling it wrong. And that would be where maybe the confusion's coming from is like, why is one home inspector mm -hmm. saying it's vapor barriers in the wrong place in one place in, in one house. And then in another house, it's in the opposite, you'd think the right location and that inspector is calling it wrong. And yeah, there's, I don't know if there's uh, any sort of um, debate about it. I think if you talk to building scientists, uh, that would be uh, focused on the climate zone that you're in. They could give you a, a fair and they would have uh, one, home, one building science person to another would give you the same answer. Um, which I hope the one I'm going to give you <laughs> would correspond with what a knowledgeable building scientist would give you, which is, this is the Bay Area. It's a very unique climate. Um, they have a moist, but cool, but not cold winters. And they have warm, but not hot, dry summers. Um, and in th that situation, the, in in, in the way I look at it, you really don't need any vapor barrier. In fact, you wouldn't want a vapor barrier anywhere in the assembly. You would want any vapor to be able to move from outside to inside, inside to outside somewhat freely, maybe a class two vapor retarder. But even there, when you talk about a vapor retarder, which, and the difference between a barrier and a retarder is a vapor barrier like plastic would block almost all moisture movement through an assembly. Uh, but it also could be a 
con condensing surface. So you can end up with problems in cold climates if you put it in the wrong place. With a vapor retarder, it only slows the movement of vapor uh, rather than completely blocking it. So uh, my, I can't imagine, we need more information to give a specific answer for what Robert's experiencing with those reports, but they may, it may not actually be a vapor barrier that these inspectors are pointing out. It might be a vapor retarder, like the craft facing on insulation up in an attic or in a crawl space. And that's a class two vapor retarder. So it really wouldn't necessarily be a problem in that climate if you had it on the underside of the insulation facing the crawl space or facing the uh, open space of an attic, or if it was in contact with the um, the living space, the uh, the drywall on or the flooring on the underside of a, 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 um, a on the underside of the floor joist in a crawl space, or the drywall inside the underside the insulation in an attic. Um, so I know I'm rambling on. Um, <laughs> there's <laughs> because it gets so specific to the climate, and I think if I, I and the assembly. You know, Right. It's the, yeah, and and what materials you're using right. for the insulation, and mm -hmm. what whether you got drywall, whether you got foil face foam on the outside, or you know it. Back in a, a quick anecdote, um, in the early 2000s, uh, I was working as a consultant for a company, and I had a meeting with uh, three PhD building scientists. They were engineer, PhD engineers, and they showed me this thing called a Wolfie simula simulation, which you might have heard of, W-U-F-I, which I don't know what the acronym stands for. Perhaps Brian or, or Patrick could chime in on this, but it's, it's, a, it's a modeling uh, that will show you the profile through a building assembly of different temperatures and moisture. Um, points where there might be a condensing surface as uh, with different uh, temperature and humidity profiles on the inside and the outside of the building. It's fairly complicated when you get into uh, putting some inputs into these uh, and, and they're supposed to be very, very accurate, but that's what really you would need to do on every individual house out there in the Bay Area to get a true understanding of what the risks may be of having a condensing surface on one of these vapor barriers slash vapor retarders to know whether or not these ins home inspectors are uh, pointing something out, which is indeed a problem. Uh, my guess is don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> in the Bay Area, in the Bay Area. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned uh, the confusion around this subject dating back to the early aughts. And uh, that's when I got started in this business publishing for construction media. And I, uh, this has been a conversation uh, every year uh, since I started in this work. And Brian, I think you'd agree. Uh, the confusion surrounding vapor retarders, vapor barriers, where to put them, are they needed is uh, a theme in our work. Am I right? Totally. And it's like, you know, you can look at it, it's, you can look at the, at vapor control as one of the four control layers, right? That you, in, in a, in a building assembly, right? You know, you need to control for um, air, water, uh, thermal and vapor and uh, not in that order. Um, but, um, you know, the, the air, you want a tight house. And then, you know, you want as tight a house as you can get, and then you want to ventilate it. Water, you just simply want to keep it out. You want to do every single, every bit of what that you can do to keep water out of your assembly. In thermal, you want to do to, to, to the degree to which it's practical and cost effective. You want to stop the, you know, transfer of heat energy through the, through the building assembly as much as you can. Uh, but vapor is nuanced. It's not that simple. It's not as simple as you just want to stop it. So it's the hardest one to get. Our head wrapped around because it's not as black and white as the other control layers. One of the things, as Mike mentioned, the terminology vapor barrier is actually not a technical term, right? It's a commonly used term, but if you look in the building codes, it's you won't find it in the IRC. You'll find vapor retarder and you'll find the classes of vapor retarders. And what I think people who are, people who are understand 
vapor retardants and vapor barriers will be referring to a class one vapor retarder when they say vapor barrier, something that is essentially impenetrable to vapor. But probably, and I've said that I say this to uh, editors a lot when we're talking about about articles, and I'm just giving feedback. And um, I think probably as an industry, we should just ban that term and always say vapor retarder so that we have to then ask, well, what type of vapor retarder? Because there's not just one. Mm -hmm. And then we can and then we can start to, you know, just wrap our heads around through our language, wrap our, our heads around the fact that this is a much more nuanced discussion. Um, and I think Mike's likely, I, I don't know that climate that well either, but I think Mike's likely right in his assessment. Um, I did want to ask though, would it, would you put a class one vapor retarder on the floor of the crawl space? To just you minimize, mean on the ground? On the ground, or, yeah. To just yeah. minimize excess Absolutely. moisture getting into yeah. the space. And that I would think that's be... the one space where a vapor barrier uh, <laughs> a piece of plastic. makes sense, right? Yeah, it always yeah. makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And that would be makes sense in any climate, right? You always right. would want to do that. I mean, some people, I mean, people even do it under decks sometimes, just to you know prevent a little bit of moisture rise, like low low to the ground decks, just to prevent a little bit of moisture from rising up and and you know wetting that deck all the time so that's just a you know under slabs under con you know under concrete floors like there there is a place where that that plastic almost always makes sense and that was something that was added to the international residential code a number of code cycles ago where we have to put particularly with full basement foundations we have to put plastic down six mil poly as a minimum which would be a class one vapor retarder also sometimes called, as you point out, a vapor barrier underneath where we're going to pour that concrete slab over the ground so that we're reducing the chance of moisture vapor from the ground getting into the basement. And for crawl yeah. spaces is, is pretty much just a short base. Crawl spaces right. are just a short basement. That's a, you know, that was a really great thing to hear for the first time, Mike, when I was trying to understand the the, the science around designing crawl spaces, when I finally heard someone say, just look at it like a short basement and treat it the same. Well, on that bombshell, uh, <laughs> Hey, thanks y'all for writing in. It's always great to hear from you and your questions are awesome. And I love hearing about the things we get wrong on the show too. So, uh, if you have any thoughts, I hope you'll share them. And if you have any ideas for, uh, feature articles, discussion topics, I hope you'll send those in too. And finally, I hope you'll consider becoming an all access member because that helps keep the light on and the podcast brewing. So thanks very much for that. You guys have any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners before we go? Uh, last week, we just finished uh, shooting another e-learning course with um, what is it, John Beer. It's, it's going to come out in a few in a few weeks, I believe. And it's um, introduction to SketchUp. Oh, man. Yeah. So folks who learn this stuff can send uh, amazing illustrations in with their podcast questions. Am I right? You can really get our head around uh, the stuff that they're asking us if they learn how to draw it out on SketchUp. So. Yeah, I think this will be a really popular class because um, John will focus it on, you know, on he's a builder. So he's going to focus using SketchUp for builders and help people get started with it. I think we maybe have mentioned it, but we also have a framing assembly class coming up with Dan Colbert. Um, and all of our classes, th thanks so much for reminding us to talk about this a little bit, Andres. All mm. of our classes are always available on demand. So anything older that you're interested in taking, um, you know. Like you, insulation you know, with you, Brian Pontalillo, Like insulation for with example. Brian Pontalillo. And because I, uh, because I did that class when I was a freelancer, I still get royalties. So you definitely want to <laughs> sign up for that class. Keep it going. <laughs> And, and and Brian's working on a everything you want to know about vapor barriers and vapor retarders is the yeah that, that's the one we should do year. right <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> that's a good one actually yeah. we just have slides with question marks right <laughs> <laughs> and if you sign up for the newsletter you'll get reminders of when these uh, various e-learning uh, programs are available just okay. hearkening back to Nick's first. Uh, letter of feedback yeah yeah it's great yeah. well unfortunately that's all the time we have for today thanks to mike brian and andres for joining me and thanks to all of you for listening 
Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at findhomebuilding.com. And please like, comment, or review us however you're listening. It helps other folks find the podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Keep craft alive. Happy building. And thanks again for listening.